Hi, welcome. Thanks for tuning into this video. Uh, so this is going to be a bit of a series on... Oh, look, I've knocked the camera already every time. Sorry. Uh, it's going to be a series on the uh, Uno synth from IK Multimedia. Really nice little analog synth. Great, I find, for live performance. I use this quite a lot when I'm playing live because it's very light, very portable. Um, in terms of kind of competing other synths in the market, it's sort of in the Volker area. Uh, of synth obviously being analog this one's probably a little bit more i think than the volkers but but not a massive difference around about 150 pounds um uk pounds this is going for at the moment they've also got an uno drum which is also going to come up in uh another series of videos uh which i will kind of do and uh, kind of show the, the, the two things together um personally i prefer this a lot more to the volkers i did have the volker keys which was kind of nice a little bit limiting uh, this one's got a lot more options in terms of oscillators and uh, noise generator uh, the big thing is you can save presets on this which is which is a big big plus for me um, and so on so in terms of like I say these videos they're going to be kind of like uh, uh, going through all the controls giving you some sound um, demonstrations on it so a bit of a review a bit of a video manual and i'll probably try and do some sound design stuff as well at the end what i will also do for any uno users out there if you want to subscribe to my patreon account i will any patches i create on here i'll stick them up on there and you can put them in your you know and use them uh, as you wish so um, if we just look at the let's just have a look at what we've got connections wise at the back so we've got power switch over here so you can power it either by batteries i get around about four hours out of four double a batteries so not bad in terms of battery use but you can also power it via usb we've got a micro usb connector here and we can power it by usb we've got midi in and out now these are these small 2.5 mil um jacks which i'm guessing they've used just to keep the the whole thing in size down because if you go on its side you can see it's pretty thin and then we've got this little stand bit at the back so it, it kind of angles it up so i'm guessing that's why they've done it that way but you get a couple of the uh, adapter cables with it which just goes to a standard five pin midi then over here we've got audio input so that's useful if you want to put another uno into it or another piece of gear you can plug that straight into there it just the audio just passes straight through it you don't have to do anything special play any keys or anything like that doesn't pass through the filter or anything like that it's basically just an audio input just if you want to layer up different sounds or you know again useful for live if you want to uh, chain a couple of these together and then we've got an output standard 3.5 mil jacks there's only one audio output there's no separate headphones or anything um so bear in mind you've only got that single audio output there but it's you know all down to portability basically just kind of like plastic um chassis, chassis and front the front's got this slightly sort of rough feel to it just so you're not sliding a bit all over the place the keyboard itself is it's kind of playable not with my fat fingers but um you know that's for me that's more about inputting your notes it is fully midi controllable so you've got cc controls basically of, of most of the internal stuff if not all if i if i uh, understand it all correctly and obviously you can quite easily plug in a midi keyboard to it if you wish uh, to play on on normal keys with it so in terms of just kind of general overview of what we've got you've got two analog oscillators and we've got sort of continuously variable wave shapes so it goes from a triangle which then sort of merges into sort of a triangle morphs into a square wave which then sort of morphs into a square uh, into like a pulse width um, thing as well. If I just go through those, I'll just show you these, those now so you can hear them. So I've basically just got a, uh, a standard kind of like initialized patch in that I save as one of my presets, which is just triangle wave, single oscillator on its own, no filter or anything. So if you just go through and you'll hear the uh, the sounds we've got just from the uh, the pure raw oscillator. So let's saw, oh, sorry, start the triangle. Sorry, I'm on the wrong setting there. Let's just get that so it's there we go so we've got triangle moving into sort of triangle square sorry triangle saw into a saw and the saw's going to sort of morph into a square which is there and then that square is going to go into kind of variable pulse there which obviously we can have pulse with modulation on that as well so it's quite nice with the continuous thing because you can get a little bit more a variety of sounds or a wider palette of sounds rather than it just being a switch from a triangle to a sort of a square uh, and so on uh, there's two digital envelopes one for the filter one for the amp standard sort of stuff 
Uh, we've got an LFO, again, which is digital. In terms of LFO shapes, we've got sine, triangle, soar up, soar down, square, random, and sample and hold. So quite a good range of uh, shapes on the LFO, and that can be synchronized. With it being digital, you can synchronize it to uh, the tempo as well, the internal tempo, or indeed an external tempo, or just have it kind of free running on uh, the, the other way of using your LFO. We've got these kind of performance buttons, uh, which are kind of like, instant control sort of of the filter in the LFO which will come up in, in a later section when we look at those. We've got a 10 mode arpeggiator, uh, 3 mode sequencer which we can also record uh, parameter movements as well so we can kind of record filter sweeps over the sequencer um, either like on a step basis or a kind of like automation which again very cool. Uh, there's a digital delay built in uh, again which is a nice little um, added bonus just to have a delay built in there as well and you've got a hundred presets you can store on here there are 20 factory presets and then eight to user presets so um preset up to preset 20 let's say are the built-in factory ones that you can't overwrite but from 21 up to 99 uh you can uh, fill your boots and stick a load of presets in there and as i say i will create some presets for these and make those available for anybody who wishes to subscribe to my patreon uh, account which i will uh, talk about a little bit later at the end. So we've kind of got three sections on the front panel. Uh, we've got the sound editor, which is sort of this section here, this sort of matrix thing. We've got the master section, which does all the uh, your presets and octaves and arpeggiator and sequencer, etc. And then along the bottom, we've got the uh, performance control, sort of the keyboard and these things I talked about previously. So I'm gonna, for this one, what I'll do is I'll just talk about the, the sound editor and then we'll get into the other sections in uh, the next videos in this series. So we have this kind of four by four matrix thing along here. We've got four buttons down here, four knob, knobs along the top. You can change the knob behavior. Um, I have mine set on, I think it's called pass through so that, um, let me show you just for example when i turn a dial it won't actually do anything until it passes the 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 previous setting on it which i think on here was probably one two seven was it or no it was zero so i would have to take this down to zero and then it will kind of pick it up and do it that way it's that's just down to personal preference as to how you um let me just turn that down a sec as to how you want the, the knobs to work i find that if you had it that way you, you don't accidentally knock the the uh, things and, and ruin your sound so top row We've got, so this is sort of oscillator one, oscillator two. So we've got the uh, the wave shapes for those two. And then we've got tuning. So your tuning goes from, obviously we've got zero, and then we go up in uh, cents, up to 100 cents, which then takes you into one semitone. And then we can go up an octave. And we can go down the other way as well. So a reasonable amount of range on the tuning. So it's quite nice, you know, if you want to uh, take, say, oscillator two up. Semitones. So nice uh, sort of range of, of tuning that we can um, use there. So what we've got then, we've got the we've got two rows on this this top bit of the matrix. If we hold down this button, it will flash, and then we've got the uh, volume controls for the two oscillators. So if we turn those both down, okay, we've got nothing. So that's just oscillator one. The third one is the noise generator, okay, which is a nice addition, I think. Just gives you another kind of sound you can use um, for your palette of sounds. So the next row is the filter row. So what happens the way that the synth's laid out in the uh, kind of for the filter is we do have a dedicated knob for the cutoff because that's pretty much the bit of the filter that you're probably going to use most. Um, so I should quit listening to the filter. Just a bit. In fact, let's bring oscillator two in as well. Just give us a bit more volume. There we go. Okay, so filter modes. We've got three modes. We've got low pass, high pass, and band pass. Okay, standard kind of things, and it's a two-pole filter um, at 12 decibels per octave on the, uh, the cutoff frequency. Next one along is the resonance. Let's just go back to low pass. 
Okay, standard kind of stuff. Quite a nice sounding filter, I think. It's, uh... We've then got a drive button, uh, which kind of a, applies a little bit of saturation um, to the sound, which can go from sort of subtle to distorted. Okay, so it's just giving it a little bit more oomph if you want to add the uh, drive on it. Uh, and then we've got the envelope amount, which goes from minus 64 to plus 64. So let's just have a little bit of a play with the uh, envelope. Let's turn that right up. Um, so, well, before we do that, we'll look at the envelope row. Now, the envelope row has, um, in its original form, for the filter, just attack and decay, and for the amplitude, attack and release. Which I know a few people like we were a bit iffy about to start with because you had to plug this into the software editor Which I will uh, look at in more detail on in a in a different video Because um, that gave you the full ADSR controls over your filter Which was a bit of a faff particularly from a live performance point of view What they have added, added in a recent update which I think is very useful is full ADSR controls for both So for the filter ADSR control you would hold long press on here till that flashes these knobs are now attack decay sustain and release and then if you do the same thing on this one that gives you the attack decay sustain release for your um, amp envelope so um let's have a play about with the filter envelope But yeah, standard kind of stuff, and then we can uh, reverse the envelope. And so on. Anyway, so yeah, standard kind of controls um, for that. So I tend to not use this row much now since the update, because I, I just use use those two. So if we hold and press this, we've got... In fact, let's just get the envelope. Amp envelope. Sorry. The... So you've got standard uh, ADSR on your amp envelope. So fairly long attack times we can get. So yeah, you know, fairly standard kind of stuff. Very useful, to, like to say, to have this cutoff knob that you can... You know, you're not having to go to the matrix all the time for that. Okay, um, and you've also got full MIDI CC control over all that as well. We've then got the LFO. Um, let's just take that attack back down. So yeah, the LFO row across the uh, the bottom. So we've got, in terms of waveform, as we mentioned previously, we've got sine wave, um, triangle, a falling sawtooth, rising sawtooth, so that's saw up, saw down, uh, square, random, and sample and hold. Um, on the rate, this goes from... Uh, just looking in the uh, the specs from 30, uh, goes up to 30 hertz. So it can be free running or you can, as I mentioned previously, sync it with the uh, the master tempo. So let's just put a bit in on the, and we can dial it in to um, either the, the pitch or the filter. So let's put it on the filter, which is awesome. <laughs> So you can see, start off with it's free running, and then you get up into synchronized settings here, like triplets and eights. So if I change the tempo on here, OK, 
Okay, you can see it will synchronize to that. If we're on just these, the, you know, the tempo doesn't have any effect on it. So you've got both options on those. Uh, start a bit of pitching. Yeah, lovely. Let's just have a go through the shapes. So that's sign. Turn it down a bit. Triangle. Saw up. Saw down. Square. Random. And my favourite sample on the hold, because I bloody love sample on the hold. <laughs> I could listen to it all day. I don't know why I just love Sample and Hold. It's great stuff. So that's sort of the uh, basic overview of the synth and looking at the uh, the sound editor section. So what I'll do in the next video is we'll have a look at the master section, which is this bit over here. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in that one. So yeah, as I mentioned previously, if you want to support the channel, help keep it going, then I do have a, uh, a Patreon account. Uh, links to that are in the description to this video. Also, there's a, a link in the header on my YouTube channel. And uh, I would have thought by now an information card would have popped up um, telling you all about that. And so that's going to get you a load of free stuff, uh, free patches, free synthesis books, loads of stuff. If you just go and have a look at it, if you're interested in doing that and supporting the channel, then that would be much appreciated. Very, very cheap. It's either a dollar a month or three dollars fifty a month, depending on which um, tier you want to go for and yeah it all helps to uh, keep the channel going so if you've got any questions or suggestions for future videos then uh, stick those in the comments box below uh, usual things like subscribe share the videos around check my music out as well on spotify and uh, i'll see you in the next one cheers <laughs>